Hey gang, welcome back to another video. Now making fencing and gates from PVC is a haunter staple and a great way to create a stately appearance. But how do you make them look more realistic? Well, using the Haunted Mansion as inspiration, I'm going to show you how to 3D model your own decorative embellishments to take your haunt fencing to the next level. So let's get to it. As with most projects, I like to start with a reference image, which will get imported into my canvas using the Insert Add Canvas option and selecting my photo from my computer. The photo will then be imported into my workspace where I'll need to determine what plane to place it on. In this case, it'll be on the XZ plane or more simply the ground plane. Once that's out of the way, I'll scale it up just a bit to make it easier to see by dragging the rounded corner handle and then I can get to setting the actual scale of the image. For this, I'll be selecting the canvas folder from the upper left side of my screen and then right click on my canvas photo before selecting calibrate. Then I can use my mouse to select two points on my canvas photo and ascribe a dimension to that distance and Fusion will scale up the image to match. Now that I've got my image calibrated, I can get to sketching out the design that will eventually become my 3D model. I'll start by clicking on Create Sketch from the top left corner of my screen and then choose the XZ plane for where I want to draw my sketch. Now that we're in sketch mode, I can select the Fit Point Spline option from the menu which will allow me to create more organic shapes like the ones I'll need to make this fence detail. The spline tool works based on points. So I'll click to set my first point in the dead center of the lower spiral of the fence detail and we'll begin adding additional points, working outward in a counterclockwise direction. All of these points can be adjusted, so I'm not too concerned about their placement. And once I have them all set, I can go back to refine their position. When I get to the top of the spiral, I'll click on the Create and Continue icon, which is a small circle with a check mark in it, to finalize this portion of my sketch and continue on to the next part. And for that, I'll need to switch to the Line tool. I'll pick up where I left off by clicking on the end point I just made to continue the sketch and we'll draw a straight line up to the top spiral detail. There's a bit of camera distortion in the photo I'm using, so I'll be assuming this vertical piece is a perfect 90 degrees. Once I'm done with the vertical line, I'll click the Create and Continue icon again and switch back to the Spline tool, and we'll add the rest of the points to create the top spiral. One last click on the Create and Continue button, and my sketch is done. Now I can get to refining the design. Due to the nature of the Spline tool, most of the points in this sketch will flow smoothly from one to the next to create my design. In the event that I need to adjust them more, I can click on a point and you'll see a green bar appear with little dots on the ends. These can be pushed and pulled to alter the shape of the sketch and how the space between each point relates to one another. This can take some getting used to, but once you understand how they interact, you'll be able to edit your sketches like a pro. When I'm happy with how the sketch looks, I'll double click on the sketch to select it, and then we'll choose the offset command from the menu. This will allow me to create a secondary sketch line that is a set distance from my original sketch. And this is how I'll go about creating the outer edges of this fence detail. You can either drag the offset tool to match the outer edge in the reference photo, or you can type in a specific dimension using the small dialog box like I'm doing, and then click OK. After I've set my first offset, I'll set the second by double clicking on my sketch, selecting offset from the menu, but this time, we'll set the offset at a negative dimension to create the opposite edge of the design. If you find, like I did, that you want to modify the dimension of the offset, you can click on the dimension and the dialog box will reappear so that you can edit your measurement. The last thing I need to do is to close up the start and end points of the sketch. And for this, I'll be using the Two Point Circle tool. This tool allows me to create a circle between two set points. In this case, I'll be using the upper and lower offsets as those two points to add a rounded detail at the beginning and end of this model. And just like that, this Haunted Mansion fence detail is sketched. Now I can move on to making it three-dimensional. In order to do that, I'll start by selecting my sketch, and then can either choose the Extrude option from the menu or press the E key on my keyboard. Then I can either move the blue extrusion arrow up or down or just type in the dimension that I want. In this case, since I know that most haunters use half-inch PVC pipe to make fencing, I'll enter in the outer dimension of the half-inch pipe, 
which is 0.875 inches, or 22 millimeters, and then hit OK or press Return on my keyboard. This will create our model body. Because this body has sharp corners, I think it's good form to round them over just a bit. So I'll select the inside and outside corners and add a small fillet using the fillet button. While I was designing this, I figured it would be a good idea to break the model into pieces to fit on most 3D printers. The vertical section would allow for a 3 inch segment to be cut out, which would make this easier to print. But if I added notches, you could make as many of the vertical pieces as you wanted to increase the overall height of this detail. So I started by creating a new sketch on the XZ plane and made a 3 inch rectangle. I'll draw a line extending from the top edge of that 3 inch rectangle across my model body to act as my first parting line. Next, I'll create a circle by pressing the letter C on my keyboard or selecting the circle option from the menu. And we'll move it into place so that the combination of those two sketches looks like a puzzle piece. When I'm happy with how that looks, I'll select both sketches and we'll right click to open the menu and choose Move Copy. There'll be a pop-up menu in the upper right and you'll want to select the Create Copy checkbox to make a duplicate of your sketch. Then I can drag my sketch down to the bottom edge of my 3 inch rectangle to add the second parting line for my model. We can now delete the 3 inch rectangle sketch since it's served its purpose. The last part of this model is to separate it into pieces. I'll start by selecting my new sketch, and then I can press E or choose Extrude from the menu, and we'll pull the extrusion down through my model. Then I'll rotate the model so that I can see the underside and we'll click on the bottom face of my model. This will specify that the extrusion is the same height as my model. Before I finish the extrusion, I'll change the operation in the pop-up menu from Cut to New Body to create a new standalone body with the Puzzle Piece tabs. Next, I'll turn off that body from the layer menu on the left and we'll select the same sketch again but this time I'll extrude it through the main body using the cut function to remove it from my model. This not only removes that section from the model, but it also turns the upper and lower spirals into their own individual model bodies, which will make them easier to export. One more feature that I think will help to make these prints look better is to remove a bit of the model to allow it to nestle up against the PVC pipe. To do that, I'm going to create a new sketch on the XY plane and draw a circle the same outer dimension as half inch PVC pipe, 0.875 inches. Once I have that in place, I'll select my model bodies from the layer menu and we'll right click and select Move Copy and shift the model down so that it's parallel with the circle sketch I just created. Then I'll move it to the left a bit so that the model slightly overlaps the circle sketch and we'll hit OK. Now I can press E on my keyboard or click the extrude function from the menu and will extrude the circle shape through my model, being sure to select symmetric from the direction dropdown and cut from the operation dropdown in the extrude pop-up menu. This will extrude and remove the circle shape equally in both directions to create the notch in my model. The last thing I'll do is to add a few mounting holes in the notches we just created so that our fence detail can be screwed into place. I'll select the YZ plane and hit C on my keyboard to draw a circle sketch in the center of the lower notch, and we'll then extrude the circle through the model body to create the hole. I'll repeat this on the upper notch as well. Once both mounting holes are created, I can rotate the model 180 degrees. I'll select the edge of the holes I just created and we'll add a chamfer using the chamfer function in the modify menu so that the screw heads will sit flush against the model. Then all we need to do is export the models and we're ready to print. So there you have it. Hopefully this video demonstrated that 3D modeling and printing isn't just for space helmets and blasters, and that with a little effort can be super useful in creating one-of-a-kind elements for your haunt. Well, that's going to do it for this one. Be sure to like and subscribe if you haven't already, but most importantly, go make something. <laughs>